Alex Mardaw was sentenced to 40 years in federal prison, double the time the prosecutor asked for, for stealing from clients and his law firm. A Russian court orders a detained Russian-American journalist to remain in custody. The ruling marks the next step in the Kremlin's suppression of dissent. Over 70 million AT&T customers' data leaked online. What's at stake? We speak with a cybersecurity expert who breaks it down. An illegal Chinese immigrant was arrested after breaching a U.S. military base in California. What are his intentions? The stock price for Trump's media company is down today following a new filing showing the former president's firm lost millions last year. Lawmakers in Tennessee approve a bill that would have produce, like grocery store lettuce, relabeled as a drug if it's laced with a medical vaccine. We'll explain. And Shen Yun Performing Arts wraps up its first five performances in this season's tour of the greater New York area, with more performances on the way. Wednesday is the opening night of their 14 performances at Lincoln Center. Welcome to NTD Newsroom. I'm Stephanie Cox. Convicted murderer Alex Murdaugh faces a new round of sentencing in a federal court. A judge gave him 40 years for 22 financial crimes that included stealing millions from his clients and law firm. This sentence will run concurrently with the 27 years he's already serving for similar crimes in state court. Murdaugh defrauded his law firm and clients of millions of dollars Along with these financial crimes, he's already serving two life sentences for the murders of his wife and son. While maintaining his innocence in the murders, he has admitted to the financial misconduct, attributing it to his long-term opioid addiction. Prosecutors had recommended a sentence of 17.5 to almost 22 years in prison for the federal charges. And today, a Russian court ordered a detained Russian-American journalist to be held in jail for two more months pending investigation and trial. The ruling marks the next step in the Kremlin's suppression of dissent and free speech. Alsu Kermasheva was taken into custody October 18th and charged with failing to register as a foreign agent and spreading false information about the Russian military. The U.S.-funded Radio Free Europe, Radio Liberty's Tatar Bashir Care Service says their editor could face up to 10 years in prison. And another Chinese gate crasher caught in California. The illegal immigrant was arrested last Wednesday after entering a U.S. military base in El Centro, California. Investigators say he drove onto the military base without an ID and ignored orders to leave. NTD's Dave Martin has more. The man has been taken into custody and an investigation of the case is underway. It's unclear if he's here illegally because he overstayed his visa or entered through the southern border. This comes as the southern border is seeing a record high number of illegal Chinese crossings. More than 24,000 came into the country illegally last year. That's a 1,000 percent spike compared to the year before. As of February of this year, over 18,000 came in illegally through the border. Lawmakers say over 90 percent of the illegal Chinese immigrants in 2023 are single adults. Immigration officers argue they could engage in espionage activities or cyber attacks against critical infrastructure. This is Dave Martin for NTD News. And the U.S. House has set a strict ban on congressional staffers' use of Microsoft's AI tool called Copilot. A House official stated that the app has been labeled a risk by the Office of Cybersecurity. It is reportedly because it could leak data to non-House approved cloud services. A Microsoft spokesperson says the company is preparing AI tools to be delivered later this year, that meeting federal government security and compliance requirements. Policymakers have been looking at potential risks of artificial intelligence in federal agencies. They're also examining if safeguards can protect individual privacy. 
And AT&T has launched an investigation into the source of a data leak. This leak includes personal information of 73 million current and former customers. NTD's Don Ma has that story. AT&T launching an investigation into the source of a data leak. And this data leak includes personal information of 73 million current and former customers. And in a news release Saturday morning, apparently, the communications giant said that data was released onto the dark web and contains information like social security numbers. The company added that currently there's no evidence of unauthorized access to its systems, which resulted in the leak. So the data seems to have been from 2019 or earlier, and the leak does not appear to contain financial information or specifics about call history, according to AT&T. The company said the leak shows approximately 7.6 million current account holders and 65.4 million former account holders were affected. AT&T said it is reaching out to customers and asking them to reset their account passcodes. It's also urging customers to remain alert about changes to their accounts or credit reports, adding that AT&T will be offering credit monitoring at its own expense where applicable. And for more on this, we're joined by David Malikote. He's the Chief, Finance, Chief Information Security Officer at Direct Marketing Solutions. David, welcome. As we know so far, the company says the leakage data could include social security numbers, full names, email, and mailing addresses. So what does the situation mean for those customers? What are these hackers going to do with this data potentially? So typically with that type of data, they're looking for identity theft, especially when they have the social security number paired with all the other personally identifiable information. So that would be the main concern out of this hack. All right, and this is not the first time that AT&T has had a data breach. About a year ago, as we just heard, they experienced another breach through a third party vendor that compromised millions of customers also. So what should those customers do to protect themselves after all these leaks? Let's say first and foremost, take advantage of that free credit monitoring. It's not the end all, but at the same time, it's a good first step. And I think beyond that is allowing folks to, to want to make sure that we don't reuse our passwords. I think that is the biggest piece of advice I think can come out of this. What these threat actors like to do is they like to take that password that you've reused uh, in other areas, such as maybe your financials or other health data, and uh, they want to take that and reuse it somewhere else and hack into that as well. So don't reuse your passwords. It's so the best thing that you can do. Right. So what do you recommend for the plethora of passwords that we've all got floating around? You know, how to keep track of and keep those updated? So there's a application called a password manager or a password vault. And so what those allow you to do is go ahead and store all those and they can all be unique. These, these applications will actually create the passwords for you and let them be significantly or substantially randomized. And that way you don't have to really remember anything other than maybe that main password. And so allowing uh, your, your, when you log in anywhere, it will go ahead and do it for you, uh, especially if you have the uh, extension on the web browser that you're logging into. And so that just manages all that for you and it makes it much more seamless. Okay, and I just want to go back to the social security uh, breach. What are the risks there and what can people do to protect themselves? Again, I think the, the issue with the social security numbers is that they can start some sort of financial file, credit file on you, something like that, steal your identity. Uh, and so there is, go into those credit reports, go into that credit reporting bureau, and now they have this function that you can lock your credit. And I think that's the best thing that you can talk about uh, in this situation is go ahead and lock those credit reports down until such a time as you need to use it for your own good. But in the, in the interim, don't let those attackers try to leverage that information. Yeah. Keep those things locked down and don't unlock it until you're ready to use it. Great advice. Thank you so much, David Malikot. Thank you. And a new public filing shows that Trump Media and Technology Group lost more than $58 million last year. Today's news comes as the GOP nominee for president prepares for a Mar-a-Lago campaign fundraiser this Saturday. He's looking to generate more than $33 million, beating the $26 million Biden raised in New York last Thursday. 
Shares of the company, which went public last week, tumbled more than 15 percent Monday morning following the new filings. The regulatory filing also shows the company only generated $4.1 million in revenue in 2023. The Truth Social owner had a profit of more than $50 million and generated over a million dollars in revenue the previous year's year. A new law that's about to hit the books in Tennessee will classify food containing a vaccine or vaccine material as a drug. The bill's sponsor, Republican State Senator Joey Hensley, says the legislation is based on the potential development of a new process with foods like lettuce. Democratic State Senator Heidi Campbell, who voted no on the bill, says the entire idea is messy. So does the sponsor know of any any instances of there being food offered in the state of Tennessee that contains vaccines in some kind of a, a retail or public forum? Senator Hensley. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. No, I do not know any specific examples, but certainly they are developing this process and actually Congress has actually dealt with this as well and passed an amendment that uh, said no funds could be used for transgenic edible vaccines. This is a process that's, that is being developed, but this bill merely would say that if that happens in the future, that uh, food would have, to, that would have to be classified as a drug if it had a vaccine in it. Another supporter of the legislation, Republican State Senator Frank Nicely, said the process would be just like putting fluoride in the water. He believes it would give produce processors the ability to mass medicate. The bill passed the Republican-led Senate in a vote last Thursday. It's now awaiting Governor Bill Lee's signature. A senior leader of Iran's Revolutionary Guard was reportedly killed today after an airstrike on the Iranian consulate in Syria. According to Reuters, Mohammad Reza Zahedi died following an airstrike on the Iranian consulate in Damascus, Syria today. Israel has not confirmed any involvement in the attack. The U.S. placed sanctions on Zahedi, calling him a key player in Iran's backing of the Lebanese terrorist group Hezbollah. And when we come back, French senators are set to propose a ban on puberty blockers and gender reassignment surgeries for minors. This comes as the number of those willing to undergo these procedures rapidly grows in the country. And Shenyun Performing Arts finished their first stop in the greater New York area. They will begin their two-week 14 performances at Lincoln Center Wednesday night. And the world-famous dance group is opening to rave reviews from the audience. We'll have that and more after the break. If you're watching this, I didn't make it. Thanks to people like you and the American Heart Association, my family never had to see this video. I was a healthy 47-year-old, no symptoms, but then my doctor discovered I had a bad heart valve that was beyond repair. The scariest day of my life was when I was sitting on a gurney as I looked at my wife was at my side and my kids had me surrounded. Deep down, you know, this could be it. This could be all there is. Not having him around for Riley to grow up with and have that papa figure in his life, that would have been hard. This little heart valve did something really big. It saved my life. I wouldn't be here today without it. The research for this heart valve was funded by the American Heart Association. And that's why I'm asking you to become a monthly donor for just $19 a month. When you do, you'll help fund the next medical breakthrough that could save your life or the life of someone you love. You'll also provide life-saving CPR training and help certify hospitals to give the best care to those who have had a heart attack or stroke. When you give $19 a month, we'll send you a t-shirt just like this one. From the moment you put it on, you'll help raise awareness for heart disease and stroke. Since my surgery, I had a son get married. I had a daughter graduate high school. I had another daughter give birth to a precious boy. I would have missed all that. And that's why it's personal for me. We're very thankful for everyone who is a donor because it gives us more time. Every 40 seconds, someone has a heart attack. The next person you help save could be someone you love or even you. 
Become a monthly donor today by calling or going to helpheart.org because it's personal. Does shopping for bladder control products have you feeling like you need someone to be on the lookout for you? Now you have your privacy back. We're HDIS and we home deliver bladder control products directly to you. We're always on the lookout for you. You get free shipping in plain unmarked boxes. So your private matters stay private. We understand how you feel. For over 35 years, we've delivered bladder control products to millions of Americans, just like you. You don't have to worry about incontinence any longer. Call now for your free product sample pack and over $45 in money-saving coupons. At HDIS, we're always in stock. We carry all brands in hundreds of styles and sizes. You'll be sure to get what you need, guaranteed. For your free sample pack with your free catalog and $45 in money-saving coupons and free product samples, call 800-701-6159. That's 800-701-6159. French lawmakers plan to prohibit puberty blockers and cross-sex surgeries for minors. They warn that a rising number of minors are identifying as transgender in the country. NTD's France correspondent David Vives speaks with a gynecologist who highlights the serious consequences of these interventions. 18 French senators are raising the red flag on what they call minor trans identification. Minors asking for cross-sex surgeries are very rare, fewer than 300 in 2020 according to data. Even so, their number is rapidly increasing, the report from the senators warns. The lawmakers said they will propose a bill to ban puberty blockers for minors. Gynecologist Laurence Kayser says these products are derived from drugs used to cure specific diseases for adults and shouldn't be taken for more than six months in a lifetime when prescribed for adults. It's extremely dangerous, extremely serious. These children are going to be forever dependent on chemical products because they're going to have to take cross-gender hormones to give their bodies a certain appearance, a certain voice, and a certain hormonal impression. This might result in a reduced lifespan, she says among other medical complications due to side effects. These are young people who, at the age of 35 to 40, will be deciding about the complications of their surgical procedures, but above all, about the chemicals they've been given, and they'll end up with cancer or heart attacks. The Senate report expresses a deep concern over a lack of discernment among adults who seem mesmerized or paralyzed by work ideology. It adds that they fail to understand what's at stake with their children. It also underscores the role played by transgender influencers on social media, appealing to vulnerable youth. The senators also warn of the emergence of the phenomenon in the United States, where 40,000 minors say they identify as transgender. David Vives, NT News, Paris. And UPS will become the primary air cargo provider for the United States Postal Service replacing FedEx. NTD's Don Ma has more with today's business brief. After two decades together, the U.S. Post Office is saying goodbye to FedEx and saying hello to rival UPS because United Parcel Service has announced that it's going to become the U.S. Postal Service's primary air cargo provider. The terms of the contract were not released, but UPS described the deal as, quote, significant. FedEx said it was prepared to end the partnership if terms for the existing contract did not improve. Payments to FedEx shrank to about $1.7 billion last year compared to $2.4 billion in 2020. The post office was FedEx's largest customer for its air-based express segment, but FedEx said its profitability would actually improve in 2025 from cost-cutting plans and leaner operations. The current contract is set to expire at the end of September. Here's a major vehicle recall you need to know about. Kia has recalled more than 427,000 Telluride SUVs. According to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, the SUV can roll away while in park. All Telluride vehicles made between 2020 and 2023, and as well as certain 2024 models, are affected by the recall. The NHTSA report says a main component of the SUV steering wheel may have been improperly assembled on the recalled vehicles. Owners are being asked to take the SUV to a Kia dealer to have an updated electronic parking brake software installed. 
Kia will reimburse you for the repair. Shenyun, a performance that inspires many, concluded their five performances in New Jersey this past weekend. The world-renowned dance group is kicking off their upcoming performances in the greater New York area. Audience members say it's a must-see. Beyond. It's so beautiful. Everything is so beautiful. I keep using the same word, but it's just the colors and the, the dance and the music all together. It's magical. It's unique. It's different. Great dancing, great entertainment with a nice story. Visually and audibly stunning in every way possible, but at its heart, it's a message of compassion and understanding that is timeless, that will never go out of style. It's something that the world could all use right about now. And I think everyone in America should come and see Shenyun. Shenyun Performing Arts is a New York-based top classical Chinese dance group showcasing 5,000 years of Chinese culture through dance, live music, and animated backdrops. They have eight equally large companies touring the world simultaneously every year, bringing new performances with new choreography and music to audiences. The Performing Arts group is bringing around 30 performances to five cities in New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. They'll begin their two-week 14 performances at Lincoln Center Wednesday night till April 14th. Next, thunder and lightning delayed the start of the Easter egg roll at the White House for an hour and a half today. That didn't stop youngsters in ponchos or colorful jackets, though, from enjoying the annual tradition first held in 1878. Easter reminds us of the power of hope and renewal sacrifice and resurrection. We're a great nation because we're good people. Our values are solid and the rest of the world looks to us and we're determined to keep up that banner. The event wasn't without controversy. Yesterday, President Joe Biden drew criticism from conservatives by proclaiming March 31st Transgender Day of Visibility. Various areas outside the White House Meant, were meant to help children learn about farming, healthier eating and exercise. Egg roll guests included thousands of military and veteran families. Spring was in the air in New York over the weekend, so were the Easter celebrations. I got out to an Easter parade on Fifth Avenue Sunday to catch sight of some of the city's best bonnets this year. Check it out. Welcome to New York City, the Bonnet Festival here on Fifth Avenue near St. Patrick's. St. Patrick's Cathedral, the home of New York's Easter Bonnet Parade and Festival, a tradition dating back to the 1870s, where hundreds of people gathered celebrating Easter on Sunday while ringing in spring with color and flair. Joy and expressing yourself and the color and everybody's like creative and it's just really ha happy. The city technicolor yeah. from the last three years of it being dark and gray and empty and now it's like just turning the color, the color switch on. The arrival of sunlight and warmth and just getting out there. And how long did that take you to make? A few days. Um, well, once you've been doing this several years, you kind of get in the knack to it. So it comes easier and easier. Oh, so you've been coming a few years. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a native New Yorker, and this is one of my favorites. I've been doing this since I was a teenager, and, you know, it just gets better and better every year. Uh, me and my dad this year uh, really wanted to participate. We saw the parade for the first time last year, so our theme was purple, and we went to Michael's, spent about $100, and this is what we came up with. Yep. Pa paid off. Uh, just to point out some details, we have a, a gnome riding a bird. I'm really proud of that one. Um, we have a bunch of flowers. We have some chipmunks on my father's hat. And um, yeah, and then pansies is also part of it. Spring yeah. is here. Spring is here. We're really happy about it. We wanted to um, do a little tea inspired set. So I'm the teapot. And then we've got our um, teacups here. And we just definitely didn't want to feel left out with today's festivities. We had to dress up. We decided to do like a contrasting costume style. We also wanted to make it like sort of the Italian carnival style since we're Italian. So we took elements of the like Italian carnival with the masks and like the corset dresses and stuff like that. And then we did spring and fall because we felt like they were good contrasts. And have you come to this parade before? Yeah, we've been doing it. I'm 17 now and she's 15. We've been doing it since we were about three or four. So yeah. 
So why do you keep coming back? What does it mean to you? It's just really fun and it's now a tradition for us. Our grandma couldn't come with us this year, but she usually does. And it's really special to her when we're with her. So it's just like a family thing for Easter. Would she dress up too? Yes, she usually has a hat on. We're going for like a vintage Easter vibe, which was sort of hard to do because I got my hair dyed. But um, <laughs> we made it work. I think she just grabbed something from the garden, see? Amazing. So like a creative job, right? Yeah, yeah just real. make this very, very beautiful and unique, right? Yes, real flowers, I'm very impressed. And have you guys come to this parade before? Yes, we love it, it's our, our favorite. What does it mean to you? Why do you keep coming back? Well, we're Catholic and uh, we love Easter and we're, we actually after this, we're going straight to New Jersey to meet the rest of our family, so it means a lot. It's a spiritual day and it's really happy and so many smiles and so it's just it's like it's amazing it's really it's a wonderful it's one of the greatest things that new york has is this easter parade thank you for watching ntd newsroom i'm stephanie cox we'll have more stories from the u.s and around the world join tiffany meyer for the ntd evening news at 6 p.m eastern 3 pacific